in today's session we are going to start a new topic which is inverse trigonometric functions itf inverse trigonometric functions trigonometric functions okay now why i want to uh, do inverse trigonometric functions because from functions this particular concept is logically coming out right so after doing functions and after understanding inverse of a function it is very logical and obvious that we should start talking about inverse trigonometric functions of course when we were, when we'll be dealing with differentiation we'll be also talking about how do we find derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions trust me finding the derivative of inverse trigonometric functions is not that easy right it is not a simple formula that you apply every time okay so understanding the properties of itfs inverse trigonometric functions makes your differentiation process also quite easy to understand okay so let us get started first of all the name of the topic has got you know two major words in it one is inverse another is trigonometric function so it's an amalgamation of your understanding of inverse of a function which we already did under function chapter and of course your trigonometric functions okay so a big prerequisite for this particular topic is you knowing your basic class 11 trigonometry very very well okay just to revisit what is inverse of a function right so if there is a function f if there is a function f let me draw it like a machine okay in this function f if you feed let's say a okay and this function gives you b as an output after processing a let's say this function throws out b as an output then how would the inverse of this function behave the inverse of this function would be of course another function or another machine okay written as f with a superscript of minus 1 as i already told you this doesn't mean 1 by f it is just a symbolic representation which takes in your b which takes in your b and gives you a back okay that is how your inverse of a function behaves okay now we have already seen uh, in our functions chapter that if f of x is invertible if f of x is invertible invertible means it has an inverse please note that for that f of x has to be a bijection or a bijective function okay so what is bijection bijection means it is simultaneously both injection okay and surjection right all these words are quite familiar to you all do you know what's an injection injection is nothing but a one one function surjection is nothing but a on to function right so a function in order to be invertible must be bijective function or must be a bijection that means it must be simultaneously an injection as well as a surjection correct satyajit okay now let us try to talk about our trigonometric function so what we are learning in this particular chapter is the inverse of trigonometric functions okay so when we talk about trigonometric function let us begin our discussion with sin x function okay so for sin x function let's call this as number 1 function let me take the exhaustive domain so we all know that the exhaustive domain of sin x function is all real numbers okay and let us take a uh, co domain as all real numbers also okay i mean it is up to the person who is defining it to define the co domain and i have defined it as all real numbers so if i talk about sin x function in the present shape that means when its domain is all real numbers and when its co domain is also taken as all real numbers and we draw the graph of sin x function what do we realize that in the present shape so i'm just making a quick small diagram of sin x so in the present shape you realize that this function is neither one one nor one nor on to why why it is not one one because if i draw a horizontal line like this right what it is doing it is cutting the graph at so many points correct it is cutting at this point this point this point this point and so on and so forth right so in the present shape the function is the function is 
tan, tan, not one one, right? And of course, we know that the range of this function is from minus one to one. So it is not on to as well, correct? So it is neither one one nor on to, which means it is not a bijection. It is not a bijective function, or it's not a bijection. That means this also is tan tan, right? So how are we studying this chapter? Because not only sin x, even cos x, tan x, sec x, cos x, cot x will show you a similar characteristic, right? So they are not one one. They are not on to. So how are we studying the inverse of such functions? Isn't it? That means logically speaking, we should not be studying this chapter as a uh, you know at all, isn't it? So how are we studying this chapter? Anybody? So why are we studying this chapter? This chapter should not have existed, isn't it? Can anybody tell me on the chat box or otherwise also why are we studying this chapter? <laughs> right. So in the present definition, that means with the present choice of domain and codomain, sin x may not be invertible. But what if I what if I redefine this function like this? So what if I redefine it like this? So what I'm going to do is. Now I'm going to redefine this function sin x in such a way that I want to make it one one. Now, if you want to make a function one one, you should not allow the function to be cut by a horizontal line at more than one point, right? In other words, you should not allow the function to actually take a turn anywhere. The moment it takes a turn, the function will be cut by a horizontal line at more than one point. Right. So, so look at this diagram and suggest me what should be the domain that I should choose for which the function is not allowed to take a turn back. Tell me anybody, let me hear it out from you. Minus pi to pi. If you take, see, this is minus pi and this is pi. Okay, minus pi to pi satyam, if you see, there are a lot of turns that the function is taking. Correct? So, in that particular domain which you have mentioned, no, it will not be 1 1. Satyajit, absolutely correct. So, Satyajit mentions minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Okay, so he says that if I chop the function here, like this, and here, okay, that means I only have this part of the function. I'm just, you know, making a bold white line there. Okay. If I have only this part of the function, I'm ensuring that the function is not taking a turn anywhere. Right. And of course, in that case, the function will be one, one, but is that the only possible interval? You say, no, I can have pi by two to three pi by two also. Correct. So why not chop the function from here to here? Okay. So in this part also, the function will be one, one only. Correct. In the same way, I can keep choosing such intervals like 3 pi by 2 to 5 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2 to 7 pi by 2, 7 pi by 2 to 9 pi by 2. I can even go to the left side. That is minus pi by 2 to minus 3 pi by 2, minus 3 pi by 2 to minus 5 pi by 2, and so on and so forth. Isn't it? Right? But let us say if everybody starts choosing their own sweet domain, then what is the problem that will arise? Let us understand that. Okay. I will, I will complete this in some time, but let us understand what will be the problem if somebody starts choosing his or her own, you know, interval where the function is one, one. Okay. So let's say there are three people. Okay. So let's say there are three people. Whom should I name? Let me pick any three of you. Let's say one is definitely going to be Arya Shri. Okay. Other is let's say Bharat Makija. Okay. And uh, other one is let's say Nitya Gauri. Okay. So Arya Shri chooses, chooses her interval where she wants it to be a one, one as minus pi by two to pi by two. Okay. And let's say Bharat Makija chooses it from pi by two to three pi by two. 
okay and let's say nitya gauri chooses it from 3 pi by 2 to 5 pi by 2 okay so these are three different mathematicians okay living in different parts of the of the universe and these people have chosen their own sweet domain for which the function f of x which is sorry for which the function sin of x is invertible okay now let's say if if arya shri chooses this interval where the function sin x is invertible of course uh, she has to also make the function on to so for on to her co domain should be equal to the range which is minus 1 to 1 we all know okay so this is the choice of arya shri right now if she wants to write the inverse of that function of course we all know that inverse works on the output of the function and gives you the input back right so this is the output this is the output right of the function this is the input of the function so inverse works on the output that means for the inverse the output of f is the input right right so this becomes comes here right and this comes over here okay now if arya shri is asked a question what is sin inverse half right so she has defined a function sin x let's say i write the function name here sin x okay whose domain is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and co domain is basically the range which is minus 1 to 1 and the inverse of that function will be sin inverse x and for sin inverse the domain is minus 1 to 1 and range is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and she is asked this question what is sin inverse half how will arya shri answer this question or what will be the answer that she will be getting from this so tell me a value that she will be getting from sin inverse half and that value should be between minus 90 to 90 what value she will get pi by 6 undoubtedly correct so she will get pi by 6 okay now let's come to bharat makija so bharat has chosen his function sin x to be invertible in this particular domain okay so this is his function sin x and of course when he is writing the inverse inverse will be again minus 1 to 1 from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 okay so this is his inverse of sin x function correct now when bharat tries to answer this question sin inverse half what will he answer this as what will he answer this as 5 5 by 6 absolutely right absolutely right so bharat will answer this as 5 5 by 6 why because he has to restrict his output between 90 degree to 270 degree so the only angle which gives you sign of that angle as half between 90 to 270 happens to be 150 only right so his answer will be only 150 correct now coming to nitya gauri same thing let's say nitya gauri's i mean i'm i'm just uh, you know writing it the same thing quickly for nitya she had chosen her domain for which sin x is invertible as 3 pi by 2 to 5 pi by 2 okay so again her function was sin x function okay i'm just writing it down and her inverse will again be between minus 1 to 1 and 3 pi by 2 to 5 pi by 2 okay so this is the inverse of sine function now when she has to do this calculation sine inverse half what would be the answer that she would be writing for such case that means tell me an angle between 270 to 450 for which sine gives you half right her answer is going to become 390 degrees right so 390 degrees is 13 pi by 6 correct yes or no now won't this won't this create a confusion in the field of mathematics that one mathematician is claiming sin inverse half to be pi by 6 other mathematician is claiming it to be 5 pi by 6 and one more mathematician is going claiming it to be 13 pi by 6 and da 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 right that means a function like sin inverse half is giving you multiple outputs that itself is not a characteristic of a function function gives you a unique mapping for a particular pre-image 
for a particular pre image, which is half, I can have only one image. I cannot have five by six, five, five by six, 13 by six, and you know, so on and so forth, depending upon the whims and fancies of the mathematicians. So this is going to create a non-standard system in the field of mathematics. This is going to create a havoc or a big, big chaos or a big, big confusion in the field of mathematics, right? So what was decided that, I mean, see, individually, these mathematicians were correct in choosing the domain in the respective way that they wanted it to be. So Arya Shri was correct in choosing from minus pi by two to pi by two. Bharat Makija was correct in choosing from pi by two to three pi by two. And Nitya Gauri was correct in choosing from three pi by two to five pi by two. But if everybody starts choosing their own sweet domain for which the function is invertible, it is going to create confusion in the field of mathematics, right? So what was decided that one of these intervals will be called as the principal value branch, right? And that branch was actually chosen out to be the one which Arya Shri chose minus pi by two to pi by two. Okay. So this particular branch, this particular branch was what was called the principal value branch. Okay. Principal value branch. Okay. And why do this call principal value branch? It is to standardize the process of, you know, how the inverse of these functions will behave. And this is the branch which even your calculators follow, even your softwares follow. So if you have a calculator with you, no matter whether it is in your phone or whether it is on the, on your computer or whether it is on your actual calculator, if you do sign inverse half, it will only give you pi by six. Right. So this standardizes the output that I would be getting from an operation like sine inverse half. So everybody cannot start writing their own sweet, own sweet result. Okay. Now, please note that in your JE, especially in your JE main, JE advanced kind of an exam, the examiner may basically redefine the inverse of a function by choosing a different domain. Don't expect always that minus pi by two to pi by two would be the interval for which he will be making sin x invertible. He may choose pi by two to three pi by two and then give you a question based on the same. So if the question setter decides to give you a different domain for which sin x is invertible, you have to work according to that requirement or according to his, uh, you know, uh, you know, definition, right? And questions like this have been asked in the JE main and JE advance exam, right? So all your formula, all your properties that you have learned, or you will be learning treating minus pi by two to pi by two as the principal value branch for sin X for which is for which it is invertible. They will all change getting my point. Okay. So please understand unless until stated otherwise, you can take the domain for which sin X is considered to be invertible as minus pi by two to pi by two. But if the question setter mentions a different domain to you, you need to better follow what he has mentioned. Are you getting my point? So if let's say, if let's say I'm a question setter and I say, Hey, my sin X is invertible and my domain where I have made it invertible is pi by two to three pi by two. Okay. So that is the domain on which I'm working. Now tell me what is sine inverse half. Then your answer should be five pi by six only. In that case, you cannot say pi by six. Understood what I'm trying to say. Okay. So unless until stated, otherwise you can, you have to take minus pi by two to pi by two as the principal value branch. Fine. So now in the sine X, oh, sorry, I'll choose my yellow pen only. Now in this particular definition, if you see the graph of sine X function, I'm just going to draw it separately over here. In this particular definition, the graph of sine X function will look like this. Okay. So it will start from minus pi by two and it will end at pi by two. So it is definitely one, one, because if you draw any horizontal line, if you draw any horizontal line is going to cut the graph only at one point and is it onto so one, one, 
Yes, it is one one tick. Is it on to? Yes, because I have made the co domain as the range. I have made the co domain as the range. So minus one to one. Okay, so I made it as the as the co domain. So it is on to as well. So it is both one one and on to, which means it is a bijection function or it is a bijective function, and now it is invertible. Okay, and now it is invertible. Okay, is it fine? Any question? Any concerns? Similar process will now be followed for other trigonometric function as well, which I'll be covering one by one. Okay, so let me again start with sine x only. I have already done half the work, but there is no uh, place on this page, so I'll be taking it on the next slide. So is it fine? What is the concept of principal value branch? Why was the principal value branch concept made? It is very similar to your IUPAC system, right? If IUPAC system it was not there in chemistry. For you know naming of uh, you know uh, chem uh, chemical compounds or organic compounds, there would be a big confusion, isn't it? Everybody will start naming a compound in their own sweet way. Okay, is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns here? So why are we studying this chapter? Finally, is because even though in their exhaustive domain, the word is exhaustive. Even in the exhaustive domain, sine, cos, tan, sec, cos, cot, they were not invertible. But if you curtail, if you cut short their domain in such a way, and of course uh, make their co-domain as the range, then they become bijections, and and then we can study their inverses. Is it fine? And hence the chapter exists in our syllabus. Is it fine? Any questions? Any questions? Any concerns? Okay. If no questions, no concerns. we will start our discussion again with sin x function but i will not take much time so uh, let me call this as one again so for sin x function we choose the principal value branch as minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and we choose the co domain to be the range okay in the present format the sin x function graph will look like this okay clearly it is a one one function and of course since i have chosen the range as its co domain it is on to as well so inverse i'll be writing to its right so inverse we do the opposite as i told you the range will become the domain of the inverse always and the domain of f will become its range which is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 right so what does it mean it means the answer that you should be writing for sin inverse should always be in minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 interval so you can't write any answer that you feel like so if somebody is saying what is sin inverse half you can only write pi by 6 no 5 pi by 6 no 13 pi by 6 etc if somebody says what is sin inverse 1 by root 2 you can only say pi by 4 only say pi by 4 nothing like you know pi minus pi by 4 or nothing like 2 pi plus pi by 4 all those results will not be accepted they will be marked wrong okay now how would the graph look like so you already have seen this in the function chapter that a function and its inverse and vice versa right inverse and the function by the way both are inverses of each other so a function and its inverse how are they graphically related to each other How are they graphically related to each other? A function and its inverse. How are they graphically connected? Mirror images about which line, Pramiti? About y equal to x line. Correct. So, in order to make the graph of sine inverse x, you all need to tell me how would be the mirror image of this line, this graph about y equal to x line. So, let's say this is y equal to x line. Okay, I'm just. making it in green okay so this is your y equal to x line let me write the name also in green okay now imagining the mirror image of this particular graph about y equal to x line is very easy right as you can see this part will come on this side this bulge will come on the other side right similarly this bulge will come on this side and this part will come on this side 
So overall, if I just reproduce the graph, it is going to become like this. Okay. Please note that the pi by two, which was on the X axis will now go on the Y axis. The pi by two, which was minus pi by two, which was on the negative X axis will now go on the negative Y axis. The one here will come here. This is one. Okay. And the minus one will come over here. That means this point is one comma pi by two. This point is minus one comma minus pi by two. Okay. So this is how the graph will actually look like. Okay. Now, just to tell you that even GeoGebra will show you the same graph. Okay. So if I show you the graph, let me just show you the graph. Yeah. So the command for sine inverse is arc sine. Okay. Arc sine. Oh, where is my equal to one? Yeah. Arc sine. Okay. Oh, oh, I think I wrote double R. Yeah. So you can see on your screen, this is the graph of, this is the graph of sine inverse X that it will show you, right? So even GeoGebra follows the same definition and hence it is called the principal value branch. Principal means something which is followed by many of the people, right? Important branch. All right. Now, a few things which are noteworthy about this particular inverse function, let us note that down because that is very, very important for our future working with this particular function. Okay. So few noteworthy points, point to be noted. Number one, what kind of function is sine inverse X even odd or do you think neither even odd or neither? What do you think? You tell me. Correct. It's definitely an odd function. Yes. So it's an odd function. Why? If you see the graph is symmetrical about the origin, right? If you remember your functions chapter where I discussed with you, even odd function, I categorically said that if a function is odd, its graph will be symmetrical about origin, right? So whatever you have drawn in the first quadrant, the same thing is there in the third quadrant as well. And whatever you have drawn in the second quadrant, the same thing is there in the fourth quadrant. However, there is nothing in the second and the fourth, by the way. Okay. So because of this, it will follow the property F of minus X is equal to, in fact, you know, I have to write it in terms of sine inverse. So let me write it like that only. So because of this, it will follow the property that sine inverse of minus X will be negative of sine inverse X. Okay. Uh, however, I will talk officially about this even odd property in one of our properties of ITFs, which will come little later on in this chapter. But uh, this is a straight away inference that we can draw from the graph. Okay. Second thing I would like you to tell me what kind of a function is this? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Or is it neither? What do you think? Is it increasing function? That means if you increase the input output is also going to increase or is it a decreasing function? That means if you increase the input output is going to fall or is it neither? That means sometimes it increases, sometimes it falls. Neither. Okay. Now <laughs> uh, uh, somebody has said neither. Okay. Now let me tell you something which is very, very common sensical here. If a function is invertible, right? It must be one, one, right? And it must be monotonic. Remember I told this when I was talking about types of functions. So even sine inverse is an invertible function because it's inverse is sine X. So if sine inverse X has to be a monotonic function, it will either be increasing or it will be decreasing. It can never show neither of the two property, right? So when I gave you the option, neither, please note that none of the inverse trigonometric function. In fact, no function which is invertible can be a case of neither. Because if it is a case of neither, that means its inverse never existed. Right? If it inverse never existed, that means that function itself never existed because it came from the inverse of something, isn't it? Okay. So never ever, never ever categorize any invertible function as neither of neither increasing nor decreasing. It can never be. It will either be increasing or it will be decreasing. It cannot show both of them. Okay. So yes, 
most of you have answered this correctly it's an increasing function for sure okay are graphs why, why, why is graph you know uh, confusing you see let's say i have put a value here minus half okay its value is here correct if i put a half its value is here so if i increase the input my output also has increased so why it is confusing you okay isn't it so come from the left side if you increase the input is the graph going upwards yes it is going upwards so it's a increasing function plain and simple okay so it's a increasing function okay that means that means if sin inverse x1 is greater than sin inverse x2 then what can you conclude about x1 x2 then you'll say sir then definitely x1 should be more than x2 okay see don't take these simple you know things lightly because a question is based out of it okay a question has been based out of this in the competitive exams okay next next yeah what can you comment about its continuity what can you comment about its continuity of course from the graph you can say it is continuous in its domain right this function is continuous in the domain of the function which is minus 1 to 1 okay but it is is it differentiable also in its domain no it is differentiable only in the open interval minus 1 to 1 right it is not differentiable at 1 and minus 1 because if i draw a tangent at 1 or a draw a tangent at minus 1 these two tangents they will have infinite slope okay so when it has infinite slope we don't consider the function to be differentiable at such points right so yes if somebody asks you is the function continuous in the domain which is minus 1 to 1 the answer to that is yes but is it differentiable in its domain the answer to that is no because at the end points of of the domain the function has infinite slope tangents so it is not differentiable okay now this is an extra information which i am going to give you in fact i am going to discuss about you discuss about this in the uh, differentiation chapter derivative of sin inverse x is 1 by under root of 1 minus x square but your x should be in the open interval minus 1 to 1 okay so if somebody asks you what is the derivative of sin inverse x at 2 you say is boss at 2 the function doesn't exist so there is no question of it being differentiable okay so these are the points which everybody should you know keeping in their mind while you are you know uh, dealing with a sin inverse x function okay any questions so now let us do a similar exercise quickly with cos function as well note this down note everything down because i am going to switch my slide i don't know today my keyboard is behaving very weirdly all right so now i'm going to switch my slide to the cos x function so there are six trigonometric functions so we'll be talking about six inverse trigonometric functions corresponding to them so number 2 we'll talk about cos x now when i talk about cos x i will leave the domain and codomain for you to tell me such that my cos x function is invertible right so on your chat box quickly tell me what should be this question mark and what should be this double question mark right so all of you make the graph of cos x on your respective notebooks or make it in your mind and ask yourself right what interval should i cut or what should interval or what domain should i choose for which my function is 1 1 now guys listen to this very very carefully tell me an interval where the function is 1 1 and it covers the entire range of the function and preferably it should not be discontinuous now you would be thinking sir cos x is anyways not discontinuous anyway right but yes the other two criteria you should be satisfying see you can choose a part where the function is 1 1 
but it may not cover the entire range of the function. Range of cos x is minus one to one. So tell me that domain or tell me that interval of x for which cos x covers the entire range, which is minus one to one. And of course, it should be one one, and preferably it should not have a discontinuity. So, what are the answers that come in your mind? Okay, zero to pi is one answer that comes in your mind for the domain. Pi to two pi can also come. Minus pi to zero can also come. Two pi to three pi can also come. Da 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 da. But yes, what we choose as the principal value branch is zero to pi. So your calculators, your softwares. any tool that you use which has got these calculation abilities they only work under the principal value branch right so if you do cos inverse of any number which is between minus 1 to 1 your answer is going to come between 0 to pi only right it's never going to exceed pi it's never going to be below 0 okay and in order to make it on to we already know that i should keep my codomain as the range which is minus 1 to 1 and yes under this particular interval my cos x function is invertible how would the graph look like the graph will look like this okay so this is 0 this is pi this is 1 this is minus 1 okay now inverse how would i define it exactly the ulta its domain will be minus 1 to 1 range will be 0 to pi and symbolically we write cos inverse x as this okay please i hope there is nobody who is treating it as 1 by cos x no it is not 1 by cos x i think those days are already over trigonometry days this is not sec x right sec x is reciprocal of cos this is inverse of cos both are different things okay don't treat reciprocals as inverses right now how would the graph look like i would request everybody to make the graph of cos inverse x yes done now many a times i mean it's easier said than done you know imagining the graph reflection about y equal to x right okay trust me many people are not able to do these imaginations okay and that includes me as well okay so i will very uh, you know candid in admitting that Uh, when i was a student i had a tough time imagining the reflection of any graph about y equal to x line see imagining about x axis reflection or imagining about y axis reflection that is very easy that anybody can do but when it comes to a mirror which is inclined and we want to imagine the reflection about an inclined mirror that is not everybody's cup of tea right so those who are able to imagine well and good you are blessed with that art of doing it but those who are not like me what do i suggest is something which i had discussed in the bridge course as well so to reflect to reflect a function graph about y equal to x line follow these two step mechanism step number 1 first reflect f of x about x axis okay so first reflect the graph whichever graph you are given to reflect about y equal to x line first reflect that graph about x axis and then second is rotate the graph rotate the graph obtained in step 1 obtained in step 1 90 degrees anti clockwise okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to follow this two step mechanism in order to make the required graph so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make some miniature graphs over here so this guy first i will reflect it about the x axis which goes like this okay and then what i do i rotate this 90 degree anti clockwise so you can do it on a piece of paper by taking the help of a piece of paper but i can also do it mentally as well so when i rotate it it's going to look like this 
isn't it so this becomes your reflection of your graph cos x about y equal to x right so i'm going to reproduce it over here so this is how the graph is going to look like it's not that completely flat over here it's something like this yeah okay i'll show the graph on geogebra also so this is one this is minus one okay this is zero this is pi and this cuts here at pi by two okay so uh, when i was uh, studying this particular chapter in order to remember the graph i used to think of fal okay when we learn the hindi alphabet fal the f of the fal is how this graph actually looks like okay so let me show this to you on geogebra as well so that you can relate to it let me mute this guy yeah y equal to arc cos so there is arc cos now arc cosh is different okay arc cosh arc shine they are different okay that is hyperbolic inverse function so we don't have to talk, deal with them okay so arc cosh is not to be chosen arc cos has to be chosen yeah check your input what happened it is not showing me any output for oh equal to equal to i meant sorry yeah so this is how it looks like is it fine any questions any questions okay so uh, right now my graph is not in the pi form but this top end is at pi by 4 this guy is at pi by 4 okay oh sorry pi why i'm saying pi by 4 <laughs> this is pi by 2 okay this is zero of course okay and this is straight at minus 1 okay so these are dead ends for this graph okay don't make arrows some people have a habit of making arrows okay you are not making the graph extend all the way up okay it is ha it has a dead stop at those points right is it okay any questions any concerns here so let me raise this okay now let's talk about few noteworthy points about this function okay few points to be noted number 1 is this function even odd or neither so let's talk about its even odd or neither characteristic is it even is it odd or do you think it's neither what do you think yes remember if it is odd it will be symmetrical about origin the graph will be symmetrical about origin okay if it is even the graph will be symmetrical about y axis but now let me ask you a very logical question here common sensical question can a function which is invertible be an even function <laughs> if a function is even means it is symmetrical about y axis means if you make any horizontal line what will it do to the function it will cut it at more than one point so can an even function sorry can an invertible function ever be even ever be even no right so no inverse trigonometric function in fact this is applied to any function which is invertible it can never be even my dear so never ever by mistake also say even okay <laughs> so either it will be odd or it will be neither okay so in this case it is neither even nor odd because it is neither symmetrical about so it is not symmetrical about origin so if it is not symmetrical about origin it is not odd and even it is out of question even though it is out of question right so it is neither right so it is neither even nor odd okay now don't get confused here many people think sir cos x was a even function right but note down even cos x is not an even function in the present definition so if you see 0 to pi cos x it is not even because if it was even it would have been symmetrical about y axis so this is the only part of the cos x which we are using right so it is not even anymore 
okay because we have curtailed the domain in such a way that this function is no longer even function correct so because this guy has to behave as an inverse of cos inverse x right correct so cos x is what cos x is the inverse of cos inverse isn't it right and vice versa so even this guy cannot be even right so in the present form cos x is not a even function and cos inverse x is definitely also not even okay all right so please note that no invertible functions can be even it can either be odd or neither all right coming to the next point what kind of a characteristic do you see in this graph of cos inverse x with respect to increasing decreasing so is it increasing or is it decreasing neither is out of question i already told you why neither is out of question yeah it's a decreasing function correct so it's a decreasing function clearly okay remember this so that means that if somebody says cos inverse of something let's say cos inverse of let's say x1 is more than cos inverse of x2 okay how is x1 x2 related then then you will say x1 must be less than x2 okay so please make a note of this second is with respect to continuity as you can see from the graph and i don't want to waste uh, your and my time asking the question because it is very evident from the graph it is continuous for all x it's a continuous what happened to my marker yeah it's continuous for all x belonging to minus 1 to 1 but it is differentiable but is differentiable for all x belonging to minus 1 to 1 open interval it is not differentiable at the end points because as you all know it will show you infinite tangents at these positions okay infinite slope tangents will come at these positions infinite slope tangents will come at these positions okay all right now just an extra information here which anyways we'll discuss anyways we'll discuss this in our differentiation chapter the derivative of cos inverse x is negative of under root 1 minus x square okay and you can only find the derivative in the open interval minus 1 to 1 okay so as you can see this term will definitely be a negative quantity why because this is positive this is positive but this guy is making everything negative right so if you see from the graph also logically if you make a tangent at any point it will always have a negative slope okay if you make any tangent at any point on the Uh, graph other than minus one and one, it will always show you a negatively sloped tangent. Right? Is it fine? Any question? Any concern with with respect to the bio data of cos inverse x? So it's a neither even nor odd. It's a decreasing function, continuous in minus one to one closed, differentiable in minus one to one open, and derivative is given by negative of the derivative of sine inverse. Remember, sine inverse derivative was one by under root one minus x square. Here, an additional negative sign has come. and there is a reason for it we will discuss that reason in our subsequent properties find any questions let's move forward it's already 1 hour we are discussing two functions only okay but before i move on i would like to give you few questions okay so let's take few questions based on whatever we have done so far my first question to you would be find the domain of sin inverse log of x by 3 to the base of 3 find the domain of this function sin inverse log of x by 3 to the base 3 okay vishal
very good tanvi very good satyam very good achintya very good so i think other than vishal everybody is giving the same answer only vishal answer is different okay let's discuss it see sign inverse of anything okay whatever is this thing let me put a question mark okay that particular thing should actually belong to minus 1 to 1 because sign inverse can only process such inputs which lie in this interval minus 1 to 1 if you feed anything beyond this sign inverse will say boss what is this i don't know how to process it okay so this question mark in our question was log of x by 3 to the base 3 correct so this guy should lie between minus 1 to 1 okay now since you're dealing with a base which is more than 1 we can easily use this property i think all of you are familiar with this property correct so please recall i'll write it down here please recall that if you have log let's say you know any function x maybe or whatever and there is a base which is more than 1 okay and you are saying this is greater than b or maybe you know whatever lesser than b or something then you can directly say x is greater than a to the power b provided your a should be more than 1 so in our case our base is 3 which is definitely more than 1 so i can use this kind of a property here which clearly means x by 3 x by 3 is between 1/3 and 3 just multiply 3 throughout x should lie between 1 to 9 so your domain is 1 to 9 this is your answer is it fine any questions any concerns clear everybody okay let me ask you one more question if cos inverse x plus cos inverse y plus cos inverse z is 3 pi then find the value of find the value of x to the power 2017 y to the power 2016 z to the power 2015 very good vishal satyajit awesome so you guys have done this chapter in school oh despite that wonderful performance good so people are giving right answers one after the other nice okay yes so uh, anybody else who wants to reply other than uh, satyam tanvi vishal satyajit arshita okay achintya okay so please understand here that you are dealing with three such cases or three uh, three such uh, you can say expressions which are all based out of cos inverse right now cos inverse whatever input you give the answer for this will always be between 0 to pi okay that's the reason why i gave you that you know definition of each of these functions so will we always take the principal value branch yes unless until stated otherwise you will always take the principal value branch which for cos inverse is 0 to pi getting my point right similarly this guy output will also be between 0 to pi this guy output will also be between 0 to pi now you want all of them to add to 3 pi that can only happen when you have picked pi 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 for each one of them so this situation this situation is only possible only possible when each one of these become pi pi each this is also pi this is also pi and this is also pi 
Why? Because if any one of them is lesser than pi, there is no way that any other one will become more than pi to compensate for that, you know, you know, value, right? So each one of them have to be at their max, that is pi pi each, in order to get a value of three pi. Okay. In other words, if you want your cos inverse x to be pi, x has to be equal to minus one. So y also has to be equal to minus one. So z also has to be equal to minus one. In that case, your answer will become this to the power 2017, this to the power 2016, and again, this to the power 2015, which is nothing but minus one plus one minus one, which is a minus one. This becomes your answer. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? Now, this particular type can be asked in different, different shapes and sizes. Uh, sometimes the teachers may give you uh, sine inverse x plus uh, sine inverse y plus sine inverse z is equal to 3 pi by 2, right? So at that position, pi by 2, pi by 2, pi by 2 is what they will each take, okay? Or they can give you minus 3 pi by 2 like that. Or in this case, they can give you minus 3 pi. So different versions of, you know, questions can be formulated of the same type. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? Okay. So with this, uh, we quickly move on to one more question. In fact, this question is a very trivial one. You will find it very simple. I'm going to ask you a few sine inverse values and I, you are going to answer that. What is sine inverse negative half? Quickly, quickly, quickly on the chat box, sine inverse negative half. The faster you reply, the fast, the more questions we can take. Achintya. Yes, minus pi by six, absolutely correct. Okay, what is sine inverse uh, negative root three by two? What is sine inverse negative root three by two? Minus pi by three, very good. What is cos inverse minus half? What is cos inverse minus half? Radiance, radiance, please give your answer in terms of radiance. Okay. Yes. Two pi by three. Okay. Please don't make those, you know, silly mistakes like minus pi by three and all even cos minus pi by three is not minus half. Okay. So even that would be wrong. See why I'm asking you these questions is because you should be appreciating the principal value branch concept that I discussed with you. What is cos inverse negative root three by two? Five pi by six. Excellent. Okay. What is cos inverse um, negative root two? <laughs> yes, does not exist. Doesn't exist. Okay. Why? Because this guy is beyond minus one to one. Okay. So all these kind of questions don't get tricked. This doesn't belong to minus one to one. Okay. So I would request everybody to do a quick exercise after today's class as a homework. Okay. Uh, today, when I'm done with all the functions, make uh, four columns here. Okay. Here you write your inverse function, write its domain, write its range and also make its graph. Okay. Do it for all the functions that you are going to take up. Okay. Sign inverse, cos inverse, etc. So please fill it cos inverse, fill it like that. Okay. Preferably you can turn your uh, notebook to landscape mode and then start doing it. Okay. So this should be remembered because you will not get a time to, you know, sketch this over and over again in the examination room. And trust me, if you know the graph, everything about that particular function is known to you. Okay. Picture is worth thousand words. And that's how we just started our class 11th, isn't it? Let's not talk about tan function. So again, I will leave some blanks over here, fill in the blanks. So tell me a suitable domain and a suitable codomain such that the function tan x is one one it covers the entire range and preferably it should not have a discontinuity in that interval tell me tell me 
and for that chosen domain and codomain let us sketch the graph as well right vishal everybody knows the graph of tan x so in your mind or on your notebook you make the graph of tan x and then see how can you choose that interval as the domain for which the function is 1 1 takes care of the entire range and preferably doesn't have a discontinuity right so many of you would have chosen minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 some of you would have chosen uh, uh pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 open somebody would have chosen 3 pi by 2 to 5 pi by 2 open you can go backwards also but normally when we talk about the principal value branch this is chosen to be your principal value branch so this is your principal value branch p p b okay and of course your domain uh, your range should be all real numbers in fact your codomain should be your range which is all real numbers so under this particular definition tan x graph looks like this so this is pi by 2 this is minus pi by 2 by the way next week onwards uh, we will be visiting your premises so offline classes will commence yeah so inverse you have to write the opposite it will be from real to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 fine okay now all of you please sketch the graph of tan inverse x okay everybody i would request you sketch the graph of tan inverse x either you can imagine the reflection of this graph about y equal to x line right if you are good with your imagination but if you are not you can follow that two step mechanism which i discussed what was it reflect it first about x axis and rotate that 90 degree anti clockwise direction So once you are done, just write it down on the chat box. So have you made the graph on your respective notebooks? Just say are done if you are done with it. Done. Ashita done. Vishal done. Okay. Yeah. So this is how the graph will look like. Okay. This will be pi by two. Okay, so please note that it will never touch y equal to pi by two or y equal to minus pi by two. It will be asymptotic to it, and please make arrows at the end because this graph is going to go on and on and on forever. Let me show that to you on GeoGebra also. So y equal to arc tan. This is how the graph looks like. Okay, and let me tell you, it is never going to touch this line y equal to pi by two. Okay, so y equal to pi by two will be one of the horizontal asymptotes. Same goes with y equal to minus pi by two as well. Is it fine? Okay. so let's go back to our blackboard and let's write down few things which are noteworthy for us with respect to this graph number 1 what can you comment about even odd nature of this particular graph of course you know even it cannot be so it can either be odd or neither so what do you think right then we it's going to be an odd function excellent okay and because of this this property will come into picture tan inverse minus x is minus tan inverse x okay next what kind of a function is this is it increasing is it decreasing or is it neither neither again is out of question so is it increasing or is it decreasing please note that it's it stays below y equal to pi by 2 but it doesn't mean it has stopped increasing right it keep on it keeps on going okay right vishal it's an increasing function it's an increasing function okay 
That means if somebody says tan inverse of x1 is more than tan inverse of x2, then what can we predict about x1, x2? x1 should be greater than x2. Okay. Next, the function tan inverse x is continuous for all x. Okay. That means it is everywhere continuous. And same goes with differentiable also. It is differentiable for all x. Right? Extra information here, derivative of tan inverse x. In fact, many of you would be already knowing by this time, the derivative of tan inverse x is one upon one plus x square. All these derivations I'll be doing when I do the differentiation chapter with you. Okay. And of course, it is worth noting down that it has got two horizontal asymptotes, two horizontal asymptotes. What are they? y equal to pi by 2 and y equal to minus pi by 2. Okay. So you can say limit as x tends to infinity for tan inverse x is pi by 2 and limit as x tends to minus infinity for tan inverse x. You, what happened? <laughs> tan inverse x is minus pi by 2. Okay. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns related to the Kundli of tan inverse X? Yes, it's like a Kundli only, no? <laughs> everything graph, properties, everything are covered here. Is it fine? Any questions? If not, if not, then can we move on to the fourth one? Okay. So this is the glimpse of this slide. Now we'll move on to the fourth one. Everybody copied. Okay. Let's move on to fourth one. Fourth one, we will be discussing about uh, cosec function. Okay. Now, all of you recall the graph of cosec function or draw it if you want to and tell me a suitable domain that I should be choosing for which cosec x function is one one it covers or justifies the entire range and preferably preferably the word is preferably means that means we can even sacrifice that particular uh, clause preferably it should be continuous preferably clause can be sacrificed also okay mind you <laughs> Okay, so I'll just draw the graph of cosec x. I'm sure many of you would remember it, but many of you may have, I mean, it should ideally not slip out of the mind. It is as vital as remembering your you know, basics of mathematics. Okay, I'm just making, so this is pi, this point is pi by two, this point is zero, this point is minus pi by two. This point is minus pi and so on and so forth. Okay, I'm not making all the branches. Yeah. This is 2 pi. This point is 3 pi by 2, etc. Okay. Now, how should you chop off this function in order to ensure that it is 1, 1? In order to ensure that the entire range of the function is taken care of, by the way, the range of the function is one to infinity and minus infinity to minus one. How should you chop? Now, Vishal is saying minus pi to pi, minus pi to pi, it has taken four, two turns, by the way. In fact, four, four turnings are there. <laughs> so Vishal, that cannot be the answer, correct? Would you like to change it or anybody for that matter? How should you choose the interval of X for which the function cosec is one, one, correct? Second, it covers the entire range. And third, preferably, preferably means this particular information or this particular criteria can be dished also, can be sacrificed also, right? Minus pi by two to pi by two, but that is not exactly correct minus pi by two to pi by two 
excluding zero. Now here, please note that if I choose a branch where it is continuous, okay, I cannot ensure it's one one nature. I cannot ensure that the entire range is taken care of. Correct. So I have to sacrifice on the continuity part, right? That is the reason why I chose this interval. So let me remove the part, which I don't want. Okay. So basically I chose minus pi by two to pi by two. Okay. Excluding zero, excluding zero to be my interval for which this function is one, one and on to, okay. One, one and covering the entire range. Yeah. Yes. Satyam, that continuity has to be sacrificed in this case, right? That is why I said preferably that means if not, then it is fine. So this is the domain for which the function is one, one. And how should you choose the co-domain? Of course, co-domain should be the, uh oh, co-domain should be the entire range of the function, which is minus infinity to minus one union one to infinity. This particular thing is also mentioned some in some books as <coughs> R minus minus one to one. Okay. Both are same things. Okay. Is it fine? So under this definition, cosec x will be considered to be invertible. Okay. So how would I write the inverse? So as you know, the range becomes the domain for inverse and domain of F become its range. Okay. So all these things, which I'm writing, they should become a part and parcel of your memory. Okay. So this is how cosec inverse X function is written. In fact, you can just write in cosec, cosec inverse X. Okay. Now, please, everybody sketch the graph of this function. Look at this graph. Try to imagine its reflection about Y equal to X line. Okay. Or do the two step mechanism, which I discussed with you. And let me know with a done. Are you done? Then we'll discuss it. Done. Okay. <clears throat> so how many of you are able to imagine about Y equal to X line? In fact, I would, I wouldn't have, right. Maybe some of you would be able to imagine and how many of you, in fact, many of you have not responded yet. So I'm waiting for people to respond. Okay. We shall also done. Now I'll tell you a third way to make such graphs. Okay. I will neither imagine about Y equal to X nor I would reflect and turn it 90 degrees. Okay. So what I normally do, I use a common sensical approach. Okay. See, this tells me that the domain is to the right side of one and to the left side of minus one, isn't it? So my graph will exist to the right of one and to the left of minus one. Yes or no? Okay. This tells me that my graph will exist between minus pi by two to pi by two. And of course it will become asymptotic on the X axis. Correct. Now, having this restrictions in my mind, I will ask myself, when I put one in cosec inverse, what should I get the answer as cosec inverse one? What should be my answer? Pi by two. Correct. So keep your pen over here. Okay. And now see, you have to go to the right 
correct you can't go to the left because you can't be between minus 1 to 1 you can only go to the right side and you have to become asymptotic to x axis so the only way forward is you go like this like this correct no simple okay now we know that when i put minus 1 in cosec inverse i should get the answer as minus pi by 2 so keep your pen over here now remember again you have to go to the left correct and you have to be asymptotic to the x axis so the only way forward is your graph can go like this simple as that simple okay so i don't have to you know imagine the reflection neither i have to do that two step mechanism this is from our common sense i can make the graph is it fine any questions any concerns with this those who made the graph did you get the same figure or you got something else same okay chalo we'll quickly discuss some note worthy points about cosec inverse number 1 even odd or neither even to anyways is out of question is it odd or is it neither tell 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 quickly odd functions yes it's an odd function because the graph is symmetrical about the origin so cosec inverse of negative x is negative of cosec inverse x please remember this okay second is it increasing decreasing or neither again neither is out of question so is it increasing or is it decreasing <coughs> is decreasing yes it's a decreasing function okay now here few people have this concern that sir let's take a very special case at minus 1 your function is giving you minus pi by 2 right but when you put a 1 you are getting pi by 2 right so that means if i increase my input from minus 1 to 1 my output is increasing isn't it so how come you are saying the function is decreasing correct this question will appear in your mind many of you would be getting this question in your mind okay now the answer to this is in your understanding of increasing decreasing function which has not been officially given to you but let me give it to you in very you know plain and simple word see when you talk about when you talk about a function increasing at a point x equal to c then what happens the value of the function at c should be more than what it had at c minus h and in turn should be lesser than what it had at c plus h if h is a very very infinitesimal quantity this is the definition when we say a function is increasing okay similarly when we say a function is decreasing at a given point c then the value of the function at c should be less than what it has at c minus h correct and in turn it should be lesser than what it has at c plus h okay where h is a infinitesimal quantity right but now when if a function abruptly stops at some point let's say if i talk about the function characteristic in a interval let's say a to b and it is abruptly stopping at b okay and let's say abruptly starting from a then how will you say what is the nature of the function at b so what do we do we just check what happens to the function value let's say i don't put the symbol so what happens to the function value at b and b minus h when h is very very small if this is more then we categorize it as increasing okay and if this is more then we categorize it as decreasing right so if you want to study the nature of a function or you can say the monotonic nature of a function at a point where the function abruptly stops then these two criteria will not work no because there is nothing right to that point so we base our conclusion what is happening to the left of that point so same thing is what is going to happen at the point minus 1 at minus 1 the function has abruptly stopped because you know minus 1 plus is not in the domain isn't it so we see just before minus 1 that means at minus 1 minus and at minus 1 which is more 
this guy is more correct so this function shows a decreasing characteristic at minus 1 getting my point similarly if you want to study at 1 so check what happens at 1 and what happens at 1 plus now this guy is more correct so at 1 the value is more then what it has at a higher point that is 1 plus that means the function is decreasing at 1 correct so even at these two points minus 1 and 1 they will claim the function to be decreasing we are not going to assess the function that oh at minus 1 it was minus pi by 2 and at 1 it became pi by 2 so there is a rise in the value no there is no rise in the value here okay it is still tagged as it is still labeled as decreasing function even at minus 1 and 1 is it clear any questions any concerns we will talk more about it in the application of derivatives chapter which will come little later uh, down the year for you all right any questions any questions any concerns okay next one is it continuous in the domain yes it is continuous in the domain of the function that right, which is uh, minus infinity to minus 1 union 1 to infinity is it differentiable in the domain now the answer to this is no it is differentiable in open interval minus infinity to minus 1 union 1 to infinity why because at the end points at the end points 1 and minus 1 the slopes of the tangent they become infinity okay so at this point and this point if you sketch a tangent their slopes will be infinity okay so we cannot include 1 and minus 1 to be the points of differentiability what happened to my spelling of differentiable yeah and let me this demarcate this because this is the previous discussion that we had is it fine any questions okay again an extra information i'm going to give you here the derivative of cosec inverse x is given by negative 1 by mod x under root x square minus 1 okay now there are some books which uh, you know mention this as minus 1 by x under root x square minus 1 okay now i'll tell you the problem with this notation okay so if you're claiming your derivative of of cosec inverse x to be this then what is going to happen now let's try to analyze a point on the left of minus 1 let's take this point okay so let's say this is my x value okay what is this x negative or positive if i take an x to the left of minus 1 what will be the sign of that x negative correct okay now see if i sketch a tangent at this point okay the graph seems to suggest that this slope will be negative slope isn't it like this negative slope but if i use this information see this is anyways negative this is also negative and this is positive correct so overall this answer will become positive right which is not the right answer because ideally if i take any negative x also i should get a negatively sloped tangent isn't it yes or no so many books which write this as the derivative of cosec inverse x please note that i mean of course they have made some assumptions and all ideally you should be writing mod of x over here because here if you see irrespective of whatever x you take it will always give you a negative answer why right? because this will always be like positive and with a negative sign you will always get a negative answer getting my point so these are small small things which you know many people neglect or many people ignore okay so keep this in mind any questions any concerns okay so bio data of cosec inverse x is ready so let's now move on to cosec inverse i think this is fifth on our list yeah so again same exercise we'll do quickly tell me the domain that you would choose for seek so that 
Number one, it's one one function. Number two, it takes care of the entire range. And number three, preferably, that's a preferred uh, thing that I want, but you may choose to ditch it also. Preferably, it should be continuous. Very good, Harshita. Very good, Satyam. Yeah, so zero to pi, excluding pi by two, this is what is considered to be the principal value branch. Okay, all right. And uh, in order to make it onto, we should choose its codomain to be the range, which happens to be same as what we had for coseq, which is this, right? And under this definition, the graph is going to appear like this. This is pi by two. Okay. Is it fine? So zero to pi, okay. As you can see, this is the domain zero to pi excluding uh, pi by two and its range is one to infinity and minus one to minus infinity. Clear? Okay. Now let's do the trickier part of the, the game. Let's write its inverse definition. So this part is easy, stating its domain and uh, codomain. You just have to flip the two uh, of the function. Okay, and symbolically, symbolically, we write seek inverse to be like this. Yes, time for the graph. How would the graph look like? Again, either use your imagination about reflection about y equal to x line, or you choose that two step mechanism, or you choose your common sense. I would prefer the, the last one using the common sense. Draw it on your notebook and let me know if you're done. Done. <coughs> Done, everybody. Okay, good. Chalo, we'll discuss it again. So look at the domain. So I have to be, I have to ensure that I have to be on the right of one and left of minus one, correct? And I have to be between zero to pi, let's choose pi over here, okay? And pi by two is this line, okay? Now, apply common sense. See, let's, let's ask ourselves, if I put one in seek inverse, what answer will I get? What is seek inverse one? Zero. Correct. So at one, I will be here. Now, remember, I have to go to the right and I have to become asymptotic to pi by two line. That means I cannot cross it. So the only way forward is me going in this direction like this. Simple as that. Similarly, put your value as minus one, you get a pi. Again, I cannot go to the right. I have to only go to the left of minus one because I have to go from minus one to minus infinity. And again, I have to become asymptotic to pi by two line. 
So the only way forward is this. There you go. Is this the graph that you all are getting? Say a yes if you're getting this graph. Awesome, Ajitya. Okay. Now let's look into some points which are noteworthy about uh, seek inverse function. Again, odd or neither? Odd or neither? Right. It's neither even nor odd function. Okay. So by mistake also don't write seek inverse minus x is seek inverse x. No, it has a different formula. We'll discuss about that little later on. Okay. Yeah. Increasing function or decreasing function? Increasing function or decreasing function? Correct. Increasing function. Okay. What about continuity? Continue, continuous in the domain? Yes, it's continuous in the domain of the function, right? Is it differentiable in the domain? No, it is differentiable, but in the open interval minus infinity to minus one union one to infinity, right? Please note again at one and minus one, if you draw a tangent, that tangent will have infinite slope. Okay, this will also have infinite slope. Okay. And again, in extra information, the derivative of seek inverse x is given by this. It's exactly the negative of what we saw for cosec inverse. Again, that mod is very important because if you don't put a mod, you will end up getting uh, an answer which says negative slope for values of x lesser than minus one, but that is not the case. Okay. Is it fine? Any questions? Any questions? Any concerns? All right. So now moving on to the last in this list, the sixth one, we'll talk about cortex function. So tell me again, a preferred interval of X for which cortex be behaves as a one, one function. It justifies the entire range of the function and preferably it should not be discontinuous. Okay. Now for the benefit of everybody, I'll make the graph of cortex in case you want to refer to the graph. Okay, so it goes on and on in both directions. I'm not going to make everything. Yeah, very good. Now here, please understand. See, uh, many people may, may also choose minus pi by two, let's say close at minus pi by two, two pi by two, excluding zero, right? Because even in this interval, it is one, one, it is taking care of the entire range. But the problem here is that it has a discontinuity at zero. Okay. So all this while, when I was saying preferably not discontinuous, preferably not discontinuous here, you could have both the options. You could either choose zero to pi, which most of you have said on your answer, right? In zero to pi also it is covered. It is one, one, it is covering the entire range and it is not discontinuous. Even in minus pi by two to pi by two, let's say closed at any one of them. You can close it at pi by two also and keep it open at minus pi by two also. In that interval also it is one one. In that interval also it is covering the entire uh, range of the function. But that has an issue that it has got a discontinuity at zero. So out of the two, I will prefer zero to pi because that has no discontinuity in that interval. 
Are you getting my point? So this is not preferred. This is not preferred. What is preferred is I'm just erasing the arm, which I don't need. Yeah, what is preferred is this arm. Okay. So the principal value branch that is chosen is zero to pi open. Please do not put closed. Don't uh, mix it with the cos x interval for which it was invertible. The difference between uh, the cos x interval for which it was invertible and cortex interval for which it is invertible is the brackets at zero and pi. So there the brackets were square brackets. Here the brackets are open brackets. Okay. And of course, your co-domain should be the range, which is all real numbers. Okay. So its inverse will be from R to zero to pi. And symbolically, we write it as cot superscript X. And how would the graph look like? I would request everybody to give me the graph quickly, or at least draw it on the notebook. And say I'm done if you're done. Done, very good, Vishal. Yeah, the graph is going to look like this. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay, so please note it is going to be from zero to pi, and both of them are asymptotic. It is not going to achieve it. This is pi by two. Okay. Is it fine? So uh, as you can see, its domain is all real numbers. So it is shown by arrows at the end because it is going all the way to cover the entire real number line of x axis. Range is between zero to pi, cannot touch zero. Hence it is asymptotic to y equal to zero, cannot touch pi and hence it is asymptotic to y equal to pi as well. Okay. All right, so let's talk about a few noteworthy points here. Number one, odd or neither? Odd or neither? What do you think? Correct. Neither, Satyam. Correct. Right? So it's neither even nor odd. Okay, now this, the confusion here, many people think, sir, tan inverse, so you made odd. <laughs> Why are you doing some some this uh, step treatment with cot inverse? See again, try to understand the graph that you had for tan for which it was invertible that itself was odd. Okay, so tan inverse also came out to be odd. But here, cortex graph that we are considering for it to be invertible, this is not in you know odd function, right? Because for it to be odd, it has to be symmetrical about origin, which is which it is not. Right. So don't expect those kind of, uh, you can say, correlation that you actually had in your uh, you know, normal trigonometric functions or your normal standard sine, cos, tan functions. Okay. So don't expect those kind of uh, uh, analogy in your inverse trigonometric function. Like other day, somebody was saying, sir, isn't not tan inverse x, sine inverse x, by cos inverse x? No, there is no such relation. Okay. Don't extrapolate, don't extend your basic trigonometric uh, identities to your inverse trigonometry. Inverse trigonometry identities are quite different. Okay. Because here you don't deal with ratios. Yeah, here you are dealing with angles. Sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse, sec inverse, cosec inverse, cot inverse. At the end of the day, they are what? They are some angles. They are some values which lie in their respective principal value branch. Right. So don't expect the same kind of a treatment that you gave to sine cos tan to be given to their respective inverses. Okay. Yeah. So it is neither even nor odd. Okay. Second, increasing, decreasing. What do you think? I mean, it is very evident from the graph. Decreasing, correct. It's a decreasing function. Correct. Okay. And as you can see from the graph, it is continuous. For all x, it is differentiable also for all x. Okay. What about the derivative of cot inverse? 1 by minus 1 by 1 plus x squared. Okay. 
it's again the negative of what we had uh, what we had as the derivative of tan inverse i'll tell you the reason why they are negative of each other in one of the subsequent properties is it fine so after one hour 42 minutes of class we are able to cover six basic inverse trigonometric functions along with their graph and few noteworthy points about these functions okay is it fine any questions any questions any concerns all right now time has come that we take up few properties of these inverse trigonometric functions okay but before i move on a quick round of question answer session okay again simple ones one line is okay what is tan inverse of uh, minus root 3 come on fast on the chat box tan inverse of minus root 3 minus pi by 3 very good what is cot inverse of minus root 3 what is cot inverse of minus root 3 Cot inverse of minus root three. Okay, Satyam. So Vishal, you think uh, uh, cot pi by six is minus root three? Or oh, now you change your answer. Good. Yes. Just two people responding. Okay, Harshita, very good. Very good. So excellent. I think most of you have got this concept uh, pretty correct. See again, many people, I mean, in a hurry, bari will say minus pi by six. Okay. Please note that minus pi by six is not in the principal value branch for cot inverse. Cot inverse output, unless until mentioned otherwise has to be between open interval zero to pi correct so the only angle between open interval zero to pi which gives you cot of that particular angle to be negative root three is five pi by six don't say any other answer any more point okay uh tell me what is cosec inverse of half Fast. <laughs> yeah, this was a googly question <laughs> because this is not in the domain. What is domain? Domain is minus infinity to minus one closed union one to infinity. So cosec doesn't know how to process half. Yeah. Tell me what is seek inverse two. Oh, sorry, minus two. Minus always creates a lot of confusion. Yes, seek inverse minus two. Correct. 2 pi by 3. But many of you are taking a lot of time to answer this. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Uh, tell me cosec inverse of negative root 2. Tell me cot inverse of minus 1. Okay. Let's do one by one. So first one, cosec inverse of negative root 2. Minus pi by four, correct, Harshita. Yeah, cot inverse minus one. Cot inverse minus one. 
three pi by four. Correct. See, this is this is where you need to you know be very fast, right? So please do that exercise which I had asked you a couple of slides back. That is very very important for your understanding. Fine. Okay. Uh, initially it will be. See now you have to think in terms of angle, right? In class eleventh you used to think in terms of value for that angle. So from here, from value, you have to think of the angle, and that angle should be in the principal value branch only. You cannot go, you cannot say any other any angle you want to. Getting my point? So that is the thing that you need to practice. Okay. Okay. So we will now be moving on to certain set of properties of ITFs. Okay. They come in sets, of course, because there are six. Inverse trig functions, so they will come in set. So there will be, I mean, I don't exactly remember the count, but there will be around ten to twelve such set of properties. Okay, and each of them, you know, will take some time for us. Okay, and uh, uh, what is there in this chapter? This chapter has only got uh, you know a couple of uh, parts, and in fact, understanding inverse trigonometric functions, then understanding properties of inverse trigonometric functions. and then the application of properties which comes in the form of solving equations or finding the sum of series uh, you know or finding the solutions of some trigonometric uh, you know uh, situation inverse trigonometric situations all those things so it is mostly knowing the function and knowing the property and of course there are applications based on the same so we are now going to start with the very first of our properties of itf okay this property is basically coming from your inverse function property inverse of a function property which i am sure many of you remember okay so if you remember in our inverse of a function we did a property like this f of f inverse x is x means that means it is an identity function so this guy is an identity function correct so let's say f is a function from a to b it's an invertible function okay so let's say this is an invertible function then f of f inverse x is going to be an identity function but we call this as ib why why ib because the x that you get the x that you get comes from the set b which is the domain of f of x so this it comes from this set okay that is why it is called ib so based on this property we have the very first property of itf and those properties are as follows sin of sin inverse x is x and again x has to be in the domain of sin inverse what is the domain of sin inverse minus 1 to 1 Okay. Similarly, cos of cos inverse x has to be x, and this x has to be in the domain of cos inverse, which is again minus one to one. Tan of tan inverse will be x. This x could be any real number. Cosec of cosec inverse. Okay, this x has to be in the interval minus infinity to minus one, union one to infinity. Sec of sec inverse x that is also x. Okay, and cot of cot inverse. So just on the basis of the first, uh, no. property that we had discuss in our inverse of a function this property is coming up okay so this is the simplest of all the properties that you will get in this particular chapter note this down okay so now this is this is very easy to understand this is very easy to remember as well but the problem comes <coughs> sorry but the problem comes when you have a mixture that means let's say if i ask you what is sin of cos inverse x or what is cos of sin inverse x or what is sin of tan inverse x or what is tan of cosec inverse x there the people start you know making mistakes 
okay so we'll take we'll talk about that also in our next slide and i'll tell you a mechanism how to deal with those situations so first make a note of these uh, six uh, basic properties and then we'll move on to that one and maybe after that uh, we'll take a break as well because it's almost 2 hours of the class gone so monday your school is reopening no pakka pakka no doubt about that no pushing of dates and all okay now why i asked is because uh, uh high alert red alert was you know declared because of this i think uh, the monsoon rains yeah okay was it raining at your side today i mean it's all gloomy all cloudy but not raining yet here i mean it rained in the morning but not now yeah it's all all overcast yeah all right so now let's talk about the extension of this property when there is a different trigonometric ratios working for example if i say what is sin of cos inverse x how will i find this out how will i find this out okay now the process of finding this is is the same way as used to find out sin of any angle given to you remember class 11th if i gave you sin of some angle okay let's say sin of some theta what do you used to do it has it used to have a sin correct and it used to have a magnitude yaad aa raha hai kuch are you able to recall this sin we used to get from our from our quadrant system we used to see in which quadrant theta lies whether it is in the first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant fourth quadrant or whether it is a quadrantal angle and magnitude we used to get from reference triangle are you able to recall your class 11th days correct this is what we did for finding sin of any angle isn't it it used to have a sin sign and it used to have a magnitude correct and together it gave us gave us that sin of that particular angle that we needed isn't it same procedure is going to be followed here as well okay so what i am going to do here i am going to call this as an angle only see at the end of the day inverse trigonometric functions return an angle to you isn't it sin inverse cos inverse tan inverse sec inverse cosec inverse cot inverse what are they at the end of the day are some angles correct of course in their respective principal value branch so i am going to call this as an angle theta and we already know that this has to be in the principal value branch correct so the theta is restricted between 0 to pi it cannot go beyond it of course unless until mentioned otherwise okay so if the question setter initially gives you the domain and range as per his whims and fancies then you have to restrict yourself to that but if nothing is mentioned you consider it to be the principal value branch what we have already discussed in the previous slides okay now somebody is asking you sin of theta here isn't it because this guy is theta at the end of the day right so it will definitely have a sin correct okay and it will have a magnitude correct now what do you think will be the sin if my angle is between 0 to pi and you are finding sin of theta what will that sin be you will say sir positive only because 0 to pi is either in the first quadrant or in the second quadrant where sin is known to be positive okay and what about the magnitude so for magnitude what do we do we make a reference triangle that we all know right so what i am going to do i am going to i am going to call this as my theta okay i am going to call this as my theta okay so cos inverse x if it is theta that means cos theta is x now many people say sir how okay i mean of course initially you will get these questions but that is simple you just take a cos on both the sides okay cos of cos inverse x is x that we already seen in the in the previous slide isn't it that's how cos theta becomes x okay now write this x as x by 1 and treat this as your perpendicular and treat this as your base okay i'm oh, sorry uh, treat this as your base and treat this as your hypotenuse okay now here when i'm making the reference triangle 
I'll probably write a mod x over here because oh, I'm so sorry. Mod x over here in the base and one over here. Why? Because my x could be negative also. No. So how could I make a triangle with a negative side? So I'll make a mod x there. Correct. Now in the very same triangle, if I say what is sine theta? Correct. How will you find out? You'll find out by taking the ratio of perpendicular by hypotenuse. So what will be perpendicular here? Under root of one minus mod x square, which is as good as x square. Correct. So and if you take a perpendicular by hypotenuse, what you will end up getting? The magnitude this by one. Yes or no? In short, in short, what have I figured out? I figured out sine of cos inverse x, and that answer is under root one minus x square. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Any questions? Any concerns? Okay. Let me ask you one more. Maybe that is something that you can try out. Acha, tell me. Tell me what is sine of tan inverse x. Please give me a response on the chat box. Okay, very good. Harshita, Vishal. Anybody else? Okay, time to discuss. Should we discuss it out? Okay, let's discuss it out. Now, all of you, please pay attention here. This is something which will, you know, enlighten you. Uh, you know. And uh, many books write down the result, you know, very easily, and a lot of doubts and voids in the understanding remain in the minds of the students. Okay, so let's let's listen to this very very carefully. Okay, now let us start with assuming tan inverse x to be theta. Okay, now if I just go by the face value of the uh, principal value branch, this theta should lie between minus pi by two to pi by two open. Correct, right? In other words, theta could be in the fourth quadrant and the one first quadrant, but in the fourth quadrant, sine is negative. In the first quadrant, sine is positive. Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do? I'm going to break this situation into two pieces or into two cases. Okay. One of the case where I will take my Theta to be between minus pi by two to zero. That means I am restricting it to be in the fourth quadrant. Thereby, I am restricting my x to be negative. Yes or no? Only when my x is negative, tan inverse x will be from minus pi by two to zero, right? Yes, yes, yes or no? Okay. Now, in this situation, in this situation, if I start finding sine of theta, then what will happen? Sine of theta. First of all, the sine will be negative because you are in the fourth quadrant, right? This guy is in the fourth quadrant, right? And what about the magnitude? So for magnitude, you are going to do something like this. You are going to take this reference triangle. You are going to call this as theta. So 
let's say if I'm saying tan inverse x is theta, that means tan theta is x, right? So your opposite is this, your base is this, correct? In other words, your hypotenuse becomes this, correct? So if I ask you from this particular diagram, tell me what is sine theta magnitude, you will say opposite by hypotenuse, correct? In other words, what we figured out is that sine of tan inverse x is negative mod x by under root of one plus x square. If my x is negative, right or no? Yes or no? So left part, left arm is clear to everybody. So what will be your answer of sine of tan inverse x when x is negative? That is clear to everybody. But I say yes, no. <laughs> Say maybe whatever. Yes. Say something, say something, say something. Yes. So Smithy has said yes. Okay. Now let's look into the right arm. Okay. In right arm, I'm going to take that situation where my theta is between zero to pi by two. Okay. 0 to pi by 2. In fact, 0 could be included at both the places. It doesn't make a difference. So I'll include here also, no issues. Okay. So if your tan inverse x is giving you an answer which is between 0 to pi by 2, x should have been positive. Yes or no? Sir, we don't have to take two cases, right? Because both tan and sine are negative and positive in two partners. So how does it, how does it uh, change my, uh, how are you, why are you relating sine and sine and tan to each other? I mean, tan inverse something that's is some angle. I'm, I'm talking about sine of that particular angle. Now that angle could be in fourth quadrant. It could be in the first quadrant also. So how is it related to sine inverse and tan inverse, both being in the first and the fourth quadrant? There is no such relation. One is a trigonometric ratio and other is an angle. Okay. And you're finding that trigonometric ratio for that angle. Okay. Yeah. So now, now what we are going to do here is see it. Now in this case, if I want sine of theta, it is going to have a positive sign because now you are in the first quadrant. Okay. Magnitude wise, nothing will change. Magnitude wise, to why right? Correct. So, in other words, can I say, in other words, can I say sine of tan inverse x is giving you mod x by under root of 1 plus x square when x is greater than or equal to 0? Okay. Now let us take the two results into our consideration. So sine of tan inverse X gave you this result minus mod X by under root one plus X square when X is negative and it gave you mod X by under root one plus X square when X is greater than or equal to zero. Now just try to take that mod thingy out of the picture. Just rephrase it. Just rephrase this whole stuff. When you rephrase this whole stuff, what do you see is that negative of mod X where X is negative will become negative of negative X. Yes or no. Correct. When X is less than zero and when X is positive, it will be as good as X by under root of one plus X square. Correct. Isn't this as good as saying that sine of tan inverse X will be just X by under root of one plus X square, no matter whatever is your X, right? Most of you gave this answer, but without realizing that the, the end result came from so much of analysis. Okay. And in school, your teacher will directly tell you this. Okay. Do this, take a reference triangle. See reference triangle never gives you the sign. It only gives you the magnitude. Right. This is from our class 11 days. I'm not saying something new here. So when you're finding sign of something, you have to, 
you have to take into consideration that sign can be both positive and negative in the in you know in the first quadrant and fourth quadrant right but miraculously the result comes out to be this right and most of you got it right by chance okay so here the conclusion that i would like you to draw is as a matter of shortcut you don't have to do all this process you just have to make a reference triangle and get your result as if the sides were your you know in terms of x for example if i have to solve this question i will just say let tan inverse x be let tan inverse x be theta that means x is tan theta so i'll call this as theta i will call this as x i'll call this as 1 i'll call this as under root of 1 plus x square and what i have to find i have to find sin of tan inverse that means i have to find sin of theta i will just take opposite and divide it by the hypotenuse miraculously this works okay so many people ask me sir then this entire sin and magnitude business don't we do it no not required if you want to waste your time you can do it but in uh, you know practical sense the sign is automatically hidden within x right so everything will be taken care by this expression itself from your side you don't have to put an additional uh, uh, negative or positive sign anywhere for that matter yes trust me we'll take more questions let's try to take more questions let's try to take this question uh tell me yeah tell me tan of sin inverse x what should be the answer tan of sin inverse x write down on the chat box very good harshita again what you'll do here you'll say okay let this be theta okay then sin theta is x okay so i'll make a reference triangle yeah i'll make a reference triangle and i will treat the opposite to be x hypotenuse to be 1 so this guy becomes under root 1 minus x square correct and this is my theta now the question that is asking me tan of theta so from this diagram what is tan theta tan theta is x upon under root 1 minus x square over now i don't have to put a negative sign positive sign and all those stuff because the sign is hidden within this x let us say let us say if this theta was in the fourth quadrant correct your tan of that angle should have been negative correct but in that case your even x will be negative so this guy will automatically become negative okay of course the denominator is always positive and it will take care of the sign you don't have to worry about the sign at all so whatever i did in the previous slide was to give you a better insight but whatever i'm telling you right now is just to save your time when you're solving the problem got my point here got my point here okay now you'll be able to do all these uh, Criss cross property. Okay. Now, before we take a break, I have a very conceptual problem for you all. A little while ago, we did sine of cos inverse x. Okay, and we figured out. Let me write it down. Something important. We figured out that sine of cos inverse x was 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 under root of one minus x square. Okay. now this property is it true for all x belonging to the domain of cos inverse i mean can i say this holds for all x belonging to minus 1 to 1 correct no you all agree with me now sir when you ask 
the question in this way we all get you know slightly doubtful about what we are going to say correct no and this property is true for all x belonging to minus 1 to 1 no are nobody is saying anything yes okay <laughs> yes it is true for all x belonging to minus 1 to 1 okay now the same thing if i want to do this cos inverse is equal to sin inverse under root 1 minus x square will it be true for all x belonging to minus 1 to 1 means i am basically trying to say is the second step obvious from the first step can i say so what do you think anybody <laughs> okay now let us try to analyze this situation this guy is between 0 to pi always correct correct cos inverse of anything will be from 0 to pi only and this guy this guy will be from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 correct now you are trying to relate two such quantities one is between 0 to pi another is between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so if at all they are equal, equal to each other they must happen in their overlap correct so overlap is pi by 2 to pi sorry 0 to pi am i right sorry 0 to pi by 2 what am i saying yeah 0 to pi by 2 this is the overlap correct in other words if these two are equated that means even your cos inverse x has to be between 0 to pi by 2 correct then only your overlap will happen no in other words your x has to be between 0 to 1 correct in other words this particular property will work only when x is between 0 to 1 it is not going to work from minus 1 to 0 0 exclusive getting my point so this is something where people get tricked very badly so what i'll do here i will show you this graph and i will show you this graph you would realize that their graphs will be ditto same only between 0 to 1 between minus 1 to 0 they will not be the same okay let's check it out <coughs> are to minus 1 to 1 uh, vishal is the domain of the other guy also right so here the deal breaker is not their domains their deal breaker is their ranges getting my point <laughs> okay let me show you their graphs let me mute this okay cos inverse graph you have already seen so i'll just y equal to cos inverse x arc cos x okay and sin inverse arc sin under root of 1 minus x square to the power of 0.5 okay now see this graph that you see i mean i'm just muting the graph of cos inverse okay this is the graph it is something like a flame top of a flame this is the graph of sin inverse under root 1 minus x square correct and this is the graph of cos inverse correct now if they are equal they can only be equal or they can only resemble each other in this part in this part 
you see that so only in the interval 0 to 1 these two functions will be equal to each other so cos inverse x will be equal to sin inverse under root 1 minus x square only for x belonging to 0 to 1 okay see 0 to minus 1 this guy has gone on top and this guy is at the bottom okay they are not same but they are same over here got this point so just because cos sin of cos inverse x was under root of 1 minus x square please do not conclude that cos inverse x is sin inverse under root of 1 minus x square that would be a wrong conclusion right that will be true only for certain intervals of x okay now the genesis of this you know disparity is in the next property which we are going to discuss after the break okay so as of now we'll take a break uh time right now as per my laptop is 7 670 we'll meet exactly at 632 pm okay on the other side of the break we'll discuss the mother of all properties in inverse trigonometry okay see you on the other side of the break yeah so we will now move into uh, the next property which is property number 2 and this property let me tell you is the mother of all the properties that you are going to come across in the inverse trigonometric function set of properties this property uh, to a large extent is not justified well in schools okay and because of that there are a lot of you know mistakes that people do when they start applying the school concepts to competitive level exam concepts okay so i would request everybody to you know listen to the next this concept for the next one hour very very carefully because this is the deal breaker for us in this in this chapter okay if you understand this you will be able to derive the subsequent properties completely on your own right and if you don't know this property or if you are not able to understand this property well then you will always make you know mistakes here and there while solving questions also so this property is based on the reverse of what we did in the previous property okay so this property says f inverse of f of x is x right but this x should be coming from the domain of f of x for which it was invertible that means it should come from the principal value branch okay so let me give you a small example here see if somebody asks you what is sin inverse of sin let's say you know i'll give you some angle pi by 6 okay what will be the answer for this particular question if you literally solve it by using your basis basic of uh, you know trigonometry you will get sin pi by 6 as half so what is sin inverse half pi by 6 okay but consider this situation when i ask you sin inverse of sin 5 pi by 6 right now you may be speculating that the answer will come out to be 5 pi by 6 but that is not the case it will come out to be again pi by 6 only correct right? so while this value x matched with this but this value did not match with this right why because here my pi by 6 was in the principal value branch it was a part of that interval for which sin x was considered to be invertible right which was between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so the answer came out to be x itself so whatever you fed here the same answer came out from here as well because this x came from the principal value branch or that branch for which the function f in which even our case f is sin x so the branch in which my f was considered to be invertible that was fed a value from that interval was fed and hence that value came out as my answer but in this case second case 5 pi by 6 does not belong to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 because minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 was the branch where it was considered to be invertible 
and i am now putting a value which is beyond that branch so don't expect the same answer to come out here are you getting my point now please note here many people question me sir they say sir why are you putting a value which is beyond the interval in which the function was invertible see you cannot put that restriction on you know a question setter right he may give you a sin inverse x function and he may give you a sin x function that doesn't mean that sin x function that he has given you will be between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 right he will consider the exhaustive domain of that function for sin inverse he will consider minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 that can be the scenario so in those situation this particular property will fail so f inverse of f of x is x only when this x that you are feeding to f comes from that interval where your f was considered to be invertible understood clear right so in light of this let us see what is the property set that we get so the property set as i already showed you sin of sin inverse x this will be x but only when your x comes from the principal value branch which is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 but here this x you cannot restrict anybody see if let's say i just ask you sin inverse sin of some angle and that x could be anything it could be like 1254 pi by 16 something like that that you cannot restrict but the answer that you are getting out of it see let's say this is a black box whatever output you get from sin inverse of this black box should be such a value which will be in the principal value branch of minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 for that particular function got the point similarly cos inverse of cos x will be x but for this your x should be for, should be between 0 to pi if it is not between 0 to pi your answer will no longer remain an x so what will it become we will discuss that in our next slide similarly tan inverse of tan x is x only when your x is sorry x is between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 open i don't know why did i write r <laughs> okay similarly cosec inverse of cosec x will be x only when your x lies between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 excluding 0 excluding 0 okay similarly sec inverse of sec x will be x when x lies between 0 to pi excluding pi by 2 and cot inverse cot x is x only when x lies between 0 to pi okay now of course uh, je people they are not that stupid they will not give you the x value which is in the in the principal value branches for those respective inverse trigonometric functions they will definitely give you such x's which are beyond these intervals that you see on the right side of this formula okay so we will analyze that and that is the most trickiest part of our you know chapter that i am going to take in the next slide so first note this down many people initially get confused with sin of sin inverse x and sin inverse of sin x okay so please note there are two different things this will give you a value right whereas this will give you an angle now both are called x over here okay but for this x has to be in minus 1 to 1 interval and for this your x has to be between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 okay so many people say sir why don't you start writing theta in the second case okay you can call this as theta also if you want to okay it is up to you see x theta at the end of the day they are just names of variables i can use x for angle also i can use x for values also okay right so don't get confused between the two expressions they are different things one gives you a value other gives you an angle okay initially these confusions will remain right but as you practice more and more questions you will understand things in a deeper way is it fine any questions okay so 
as as i discussed with you let us now try to figure out what will happen let's say in our first formula if your x is beyond this integral okay so let us take this first in our next slide so i'll just write down here please appreciate the difference appreciate the difference in these two expressions okay they're not the same sin of sin inverse and sin inverse of sin they are two different things don't get confused between them so sir anyways dono mein sin sin to kat jata hai na <laughs> it's not like it is not like they they get cancelled out you know okay you have there are there are certain things which you have to take into consideration now let's talk about sin of sorry sin inverse of sin x in more detail okay now what we learned was it is x when your x is between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 now let us try to figure out what happens to this answer or what will be this answer if i go beyond this interval that means let's say if i go from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 or if i go from 3 pi by 2 to 5 pi by 2 da 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 okay so what happens what happens what happens when i go beyond this interval even let's say i go backwards also what happens when i go between minus 3 pi by 2 to pi by 2 so what happens to this answer okay and i can keep on going let us try to figure out what what really takes place so let's try to figure out these question marks okay and once we are able to figure out this question mark we'll be able to see some pattern okay chalo so uh, which one would you like to start with let us start with this guy first okay what happens to the result of sin inverse sin x or what answer comes out from it when your x is between pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 so when it is between 90 degree to 270 degree of course everybody agrees that the answer will not be x correct up till now this thing should be you know clear to everybody that i cannot write an x over here why because if i write an x over here means you are trying to say that sin inverse is throwing out a value which is beyond the principal value branch which is not possible so my answer should be this you know between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 only it cannot exceed it right it cannot go beyond that that uh, uh, restriction of minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 correct so what should be this answer okay of course it will come out in terms of x only let's try to figure it out let's try to figure it out now there are three ways to figure it out i'll discuss all the three ways the first way is okay the simplest of all way is by choosing a special value okay i call this as special value approach or special value method okay and many people like this method a lot that's why this is the first thing i am discussing with you so do something do one thing take an x which is between minus uh, sorry take an x which is between uh, pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 and that x should be known to you i mean it should be a known angle and avoid taking the extreme points tell me any angle between 90 to uh, 270 any allied angle that you know of are tell me any, any angle between 90 to 270 any allied angle okay 135 One thirty-five. I'm writing it in degrees only, uh, just for you to understand it properly. Okay, yeah. Let's write try one thirty-five degrees. Okay. Now let's say if somebody asks you what is sine inverse of sine one thirty-five degrees, how will you evaluate it? You say, okay, I will first find out sine one thirty-five. Sine one thirty-five is one by root two. Correct. One by root two gives you forty-five degrees. Correct. Now tell me what would you do with one thirty-five? Now this is your x. okay so that you end up getting 45 degrees what would you do with this okay now you have to only you know use multiples of pi to make that change why multiples of pi to make that change now this is very important see what are you do you what are you doing here you are trying to find out sin inverse of sin 135 degree you want to find some value for it right let's say i call that value as alpha now you are trying to do actually this let's take sin on both the sides let's take sin on both the sides
Okay. Now treat this as sine of sine inverse of some x. So isn't this as good as sine one thirty five, which is x? Correct. So now you're trying to find out such an alpha. Of course, that alpha should be between minus ninety to ninety. I will talk about that also. But essentially, what are you doing? You are trying to solve this kind of an equation. Sine one thirty five is equal to sine alpha, right? So now that alpha could either be pi minus one thirty five, or you can say one eighty minus one thirty five, correct? Or it could be one eighty, or sorry, three sixty, three sixty minus one uh, plus one thirty five, correct? Or it could be five forty. Minus one thirty five, and so on and so forth. Correct. Now here, out of all these operations, which operation will you apply to one thirty five so as to get forty five? You will say obviously, sir, the first one I will apply. Correct. So you'll get one eighty degree minus one thirty five to get forty five, isn't it? In short, what you have done, you have done pi minus x, isn't it? So let me write here. So you have actually done pi minus x to get your answer, isn't it? So the answer to this question, the answer to this question, what would be the answer of sine inverse sine x when your x lies between pi by two to three pi by two? Your answer will be pi minus x. Okay. Now many of you would be thinking, sir. Try taking some other value, right? So I want to see whether the answer is consistent, irrespective of whatever value you take. Okay, now you take any any other value. I'm requesting you to give me some other value for x. One fifty degree. Okay, so Harshita is taking x to be one fifty degree. Okay, so let's see. So ये तो किया हुआ ना. This is already done in the previous page. Okay, so sine inverse sine one fifty degree. Okay, it gives you sine inverse half, which is thirty degree. I'm just writing it in terms of degrees, even though you should be writing in in radians. So, isn't this thirty degrees coming from one eighty minus one fifty, which is justifying the fact that your answer should be again pi minus x? So, whatever I took, it is falling in line with this also. Okay, so this is the simplest approach that you can use in order to get the result over here. In fact, towards the end of this exercise, I will give you a graph also of sine inverse sine x. Okay, is it fine? Now, this is method number one, which many people appreciate because of its simplicity. Method number two. Method number two is the graph approach or the graph method. Now, see everybody, please pay attention. When we are trying to find out sine inverse. Sin x, okay, and your x is let's say between uh, pi by two to three pi by two. You are looking out for an angle alpha. You are looking out for some angle alpha where this alpha should be coming from minus pi by two to pi by two because as I told you, sine inverse of anything will give you an output which is in the interval minus pi by two to pi by two only. Are you getting my point? in short you are trying to figure out an angle which is between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 for which sin is same as the sin of that given angle x right so what we do is we will make a regular sin x graph okay so let me make a regular sin x graph so this is my regular sin x graph okay And basically, your x is somewhere between pi by two to three pi by two. Okay, take a dummy x. Let's say you take a x over here. Okay, so this whole thing is your x. This whole thing is your x. Fine. Now, what are you doing here? You are trying to see which angle, which angle in this branch which I am bubbling. Gives you the same answer as that of sine x. That means, which is this angle alpha? Are you getting my point? So you are trying to see that which angle alpha between zero to nine, between minus pi by two to pi by two, is giving you the same sign as sine of x. Correct. Which is clearly from the diagram this value. 
So I'm looking for this value. I hope you can see that in the gray color, correct? Now looking at the symmetricity of the figure, can I say alpha, this gap alpha and this gap should be the same, correct? So can I say from that figure that alpha is same as this gap and this gap is the gap between pi and x, correct? So the answer to this question becomes pi minus x. Same answer as what we got for step uh, for approach with approach one as well, correct? But this method, many people find it slightly difficult, correct? Another method I'll tell you, which is the quadrant method. Third method, quadrant method. See, it is up to you to use any method you want. Quadrant method. Okay. In this, what people do, they take an angle which is between pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2. Take any angle which is between pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2. Let's say I take this angle. Okay. So this is my x. Okay. Now, look for such an angle which should lie between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. That means it should be in this zone for which sign is same as sine of x. Right? So I'm looking for such an angle alpha, which is in this gray zone, whose sign is same as sine of x. So you'll say, sir, obviously that angle must be this guy, which I'm showing you pink. This guy. Yes or no? This is my required alpha. Now you tell me, how is this alpha related to this x? How is this alpha related to this x? Can we tell you, look at the figure. They are so symmetrical. This gap and this gap will be the same. Tell me, how is the alpha related to that x? <laughs> Most of you would be thinking, sir, this time I'm getting x minus pi. Please note that x minus pi this angle is a negative angle as per the diagram. You, you, you're looking at a clockwise angle of alpha. So it cannot be X minus pi. It will be negative of this. Correct. So it'll give you pi minus X back as your answer. Getting my point. Getting my point. So whichever of the three approaches you are more convenient with, you can use that to find out the answers to such questions. Okay. However, at the end of this particular discussion, you will get a graph of sine inverse sine x. That will be a one-stop solution for all such problems. So you don't have to worry about remembering all these values. But as a matter of exercise, I would request everybody to tell me what is this second question mark? Please figure this out and tell me your response on the chat box. So what is sine inverse sine x? when your X is between 270 degrees to five, uh, 450 degrees. Give me a response on the chat box. You can use any of the three methods you feel like. Either you choose a special value and figure out the process, or you choose a, a graphical approach, or you choose the quadrant approach. It is up to you. <clears throat> okay, Satyam. Okay, now I'm getting two types of answers. I'm waiting for more types. Yes, just two people. 
able to figure this out? Okay, see, everybody wants to take a shortcut route. Okay, so even I will take an angle. Okay, let's take an angle between uh, 270 and 450 degree, which is very familiar to me. Maybe I'll take, uh, uh, let's take X as 300 degrees. Okay, that's the simplest of angles I can get. Okay, now somebody is asking you what is sine inverse sine 300 degrees. Okay, so as a matter of fact, I will actually find sine 300 degrees, which is negative root 3 by 2. And this gives me the answer as minus 60 degrees, correct? Now, obviously, in order to get minus, uh, 600, minus 60 degree from 300 degree, you will do this operation, correct? Yes or no? That's how you get minus 60, correct? In other words, you are doing x minus 2 pi. So this becomes your this question, double question mark. Okay. So this is x minus 2 pi. Okay, so uh, only per person who got this right is Aravind, Aravind Aran. Satyam and Harshita got your mistake. Okay, I'll give more opportunities. Don't worry, <laughs> I'll give more opportunities. Okay, Ch tell me what should be the answer if my x is between five pi by two to seven pi by two. Tell me the answer. And whatever answer you are getting, my dear, always do this quick check. Is my sign x? For example, some people here said 2 pi minus x, right? So see what you're trying to find. What you're trying to say, you're trying to say that, let's say I consider your wrong answer to be right. Okay. So I will do quickly this check. I will quickly check whether these two are equal or not. No, they are not. This guy is minus of sign x. I hope you remember your basic class 11 trigonometry. So this answer cannot be correct. Okay. So when you're giving you me uh, your answer, do this quick check. Okay. So whatever answer I'm saying is the sign of that answer, same as sign of X, then only it will work. <laughs> then only it may work. <laughs> okay. So just see this and then tell me the answer. <laughs> Very good, Arshita. That is correct. But you guys are taking a lot of time. Ah, again, Tanvi. Sign of whatever you said is same as sine x. Are you sure? Okay. Take an angle between See, what is this angle? Uh, 450 and this angle is 6. Uh, so take an angle between 450 and 630 degrees. Take any angle. Let's take 600. Okay. That's a familiar angle to us. Okay. Now, now what is sine inverse sine is 600 degrees? Okay. Now sine 600, 600 will be uh, 540, 600 will fall in the third quadrant, right? So this will be 60. So this will be negative negative root three by two, correct? Okay. So this will give you negative 60. Correct. Now in order to get, in order to get minus 60 from 600, what will I do? I will do 540 minus 600, which is nothing but three pi minus X. Yes or no? Correct. So this answer here will be three pi minus X. Okay. And you can check 
साइन एक्स एंड साइन थ्री पाए माइनस एक्स विल बी सेम एंड सेम गो ऑन एंड ऑन ओके लेट मी गिव यू वन मोर अपॉर्चुनिटी लेट्स डू दिस ट्रिपल क्वेश्चन मार्क लेट्स फाइंड दिस आउट Everybody, please find out that triple question mark. This one. Ah, Vishal, are you sure? Acha, one more, one more checkpoint. Whatever you're trying to say as the answer, okay. <laughs> take any any number, take any x in this interval, okay, and apply that formula that you have said. Is your answer between minus pi by two to pi by two always? For example, the answer that you said, Vishal, would lead your result to be between minus eleven pi by two uh, to I think minus seven pi by two. So that is not going to be the answer. That cannot be the answer. Okay, Arvind. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. It is very important property. That's why I'm spending time on it because it's so important to get it right. Because later on, all the properties will be related to this indirectly. Okay, so up till now, three people have answered, and all their answers are different. So Satyam has a different answer. Arvind gave a different answer, and of course Vishal gave a uh, incorrect answer, which I already told him. By the way, one of you is right. No, I think none of you is right. <laughs> See, guys, again, let's try to figure it out. Let's try to figure it out again. Let's use a, a special value approach. Ah, Satya, now you are on the right track. So I'll use a special value approach. Let me erase uh, unwanted stuff from here. Okay. <clears throat> Between minus three pi by two to minus pi by two, take a familiar angle. Uh, maybe let's say I take uh, minus one twenty degrees. I'm keeping it in radians because radians is more easy to connect in terms of uh, simple arithmetic operations. Oh, sorry, degrees is more easy to connect. Okay, now let me ask this question: What is sine inverse sine minus one twenty degree? First of all, sine minus one twenty degree is itself negative root three by two. Okay, coincidentally, I'm getting negative root three by two for the third time right now. Now this guy is going to give you minus sixty degrees. Okay, a minus one twenty. How? What will I do? What operation should I subject this to to get minus one sixty? Uh, sorry, to get minus sixty. If I add a pi, that means this is my x. Okay, if I add a pi, I will get plus sixty. Correct. So what I'll do, I'll add a pi, but that will give me plus sixty. And in order to get minus sixty, I'll do a minus here, isn't it? Isn't it? So I have to do one eighty plus x and minus of the whole thing. That means the answer that I should be getting is minus pi minus x. Got the point? Okay. So this answer is, this answer is minus pi minus x. Okay. Anyways, even if you are making a mistake consistently over here, don't worry. When you know the graph of sine inverse sine x, you will no longer make such mistakes. So let us quickly jump to the graph. Is this is this values? I mean, can I can I see a pattern in which these answers are coming? So let us see whether there is a pattern or not, and that pattern will be evident from the graph. Okay. Okay. So let's go. Let's go to. Let's go to. the next page
let's go to the next page okay in fact what i i will do is i will copy the previous page result so that i don't have to write this thing once again let me remove my camera Yeah, so this was the previous slide uh, you know, discussion that we had. Now let's try to graph it. Let's try to graph it. Yeah. Now all of you please pay attention. Very, very important. So on the Y axis, I am plotting sine inverse sine X. And on the x axis, on the x axis, I'm plotting x. Okay, of course. Now, all of you see this, you are calling this as y. Okay. So treat as if you are plotting y equal to x, y equal to x when, when your x is between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Okay. So th this is as good as you plotting y equal to x when your x is between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 correct so on the x axis between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 you will be getting a part of y equal to x line which is like this maybe i should write this slightly smaller yeah so you're going to get a part of this line like this y equal to x line Everybody knows how y equal to x line looks. Okay. Now, when you are looking at pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2, when you're looking at pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2, what are you plotting? You're plotting y equal to pi minus x. Correct. How does y equal to pi minus x look like? Again, it's a straight line with a slope of minus 1. Correct. So, can I say it is going to look like this? Please note, it will be cutting the x-axis at pi. Correct. Now, when you're looking at 3 pi by 2 to 5 pi by 2 interval, what are you plotting? You're plotting y equal to x minus 2 pi. Correct. So x minus 2 pi is again a positively sloped line, which will go like this. Correct. So this is between, this is this between 3 pi by 2 to pi pi by 2. Correct. And in between, it will cut 2 pi. Correct. If you see, there's a trend coming up in the way this graph is shaping up. So it will be like this zigzag, zigzag fashion. Okay. And you can keep drawing this on and on, but I'm just saving your and my time by drawing it quickly. Okay. So this graph will keep on going in both directions all the way. Okay. Because you can put any real X. Okay. So you can treat as if you can treat as if your sin X graph has become sawtooth like this or triangular like this. Okay. So please remember this graph. This is very, very important graph, which will be useful in solving many problems. Right. And each of these lines that you see, they are your given expression that you have already found out. This is y equal to x. This is y equal to pi minus x. This is y equal to 2 pi plus uh, x minus 2 pi. This is y equal to 3 pi minus x. In fact, I can always predict this line equation. This line equation will be x minus 4 pi. This line will be 5 pi minus x and da 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 da. Here also this line that you see. This is y equal to minus pi minus x. This, this point will be minus 2 pi. 
So this line will be y equal to x plus two pi. Okay. Yes or no? Easy to figure out everything from this particular uh, you know graph. Okay. So few things that I would like you to note down about this, even though it is very obvious from the graph. Number one. Sine inverse of sine x is an odd function. Okay. It is a periodic function. This is periodic with period. Who will tell me what is the period of sine inverse sine x? With fundamental period or period equal to? Right, two pi. Very good. Next, domain of sine inverse sine x. Any real number, but a range of sine inverse sine x will be as good as range of sine x, which is minus pi by two to pi by two. Okay, so as you can see, the graph is not going beyond minus pi by two to pi by two. Okay. So this graph is continuous for all X belonging to real number. It is differentiable for all X belonging to real number, except odd multiples of pi by two. Okay. As you can see at pi by two, at three pi by two, at five pi by two, at seven pi by two, etc. It has got sharp corners, or it has got corners. So there, it cannot be differentiable. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Any questions? Any concerns? Okay. Now look at this graph. Look at this graph and only from the graph, tell me what is sine inverse of sine 27 pi by eight. Just from this graph, you can answer your answer this question. What is sine inverse of sine 27 pi by eight? Give me a response on the chat box. Satyam, are you sure? Lock kar diya jai? Or you want to? <laughs> Not sure. See, make use of this graph. Make use of this graph. This is your X. Okay. Now, if you see, <clears throat> sorry, your X is. 3 pi plus 3 pi by 8, correct? By the way, 3 pi by 8 is lesser than pi by 2, correct? So you are somewhere over here. This is your x, correct? Means the answer that you should get will come from this line's equation y equal to 3 pi minus x, correct? So the answer that you will get will come from 3 pi minus x, and x is 27 pi by 8 which makes the answer as minus three pi by eight. Got it. Okay. So it is not three pi by eight. Is it fine? Any questions? Okay. I will not allow you to move till you answer these questions of mine. So let us take this. Find 
द फॉलोइंग फाइंड द फॉलोइंग ओके नंबर वन इनफैक्ट विल गो वन बाय वन साइन इनवर्स ऑफ साइन टू साइन इनवर्स ऑफ साइन टू गिव मी रिस्पॉन्स ऑन द चैट बॉक्स Dot dot dot. So this is zero. This is pi by two. This is pi. Three pi by two. Two pi. Two point five pi. Three pi. I'm just writing in terms of pi only. Da 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 da. Look at this graph and try to answer this question. pi ke terms mein i will appreciate in terms of pi only so tell me in terms of pi only harshita don't give me uh, absolute value okay correct theek hai anybody else see what is this two is this two in degrees or is it in radians first of all let me ask this question to you Maybe something that I will ask a eleventh grader now. Yes, it is in radians, correct? So don't never consider just a two written as two degrees, right? If it was in degrees, I would have mentioned a small O on the top of it, but it is not that, correct? Now two radians means you are somewhere over here. That means you are more than pi by two, but lesser than pi, correct? So when you go up, you hit this line, isn't it? So this this is the line that you hit. so what is the equation of that line that will help you to find the value correct so the equation of this line is clearly x minus pi i'm sorry pi minus x <laughs> pi minus x correct so the answer to this question will be pi minus 2 clear everybody okay chalo we'll take more question those who could not solve this one so more opportunities what is sin inverse sin 5 sin inverse sin 5 okay vishal Okay, Satya. Come on, I want answer to come from everybody, please. This is the mother of all inverse trigonometric function properties. If you understand this well, your life will be easy in this chapter. Else, it will be equally difficult. Good, Harshita. Others should I start naming him? Smriti, Nitya, Pramiti, Rahul, Rohan, Rahul, Vihan, Arashri, Shri Venkat. Five. Where do you think will five lie? Of course, it will be lesser than two pi. Correct. in fact in fact if i if i ask you 5 will be uh will it be more than 1.5 will it be more than 3 by 2 pi yes because 3 by 2 pi is 3 into 1.57 i think this will be lesser than 5 okay and of course it will be lesser than 2 pi correct so you are somewhere over here you will be somewhere over here 5 correct so you are basically dealing with this line okay this line equation is y equal to X minus two pi. So the answer to this question will be five minus two pi because your x is five. 
clear now people are not responding so hence i have to ask more questions <laughs> okay tell me sign inverse sign 10 sign inverse sign 10 Okay, Vishal. Okay, Arvind. <clears throat> Satya, very good. Yes, so 10, see, this is this is 3.5 pi. I think 3.5 pi will exceed 10. So 10 is somewhere between 3 pi to 3.5 pi. Correct. So 10 is somewhere over here. So you will be dealing with this line. Okay, what is the equation of this line? Y equal to 3 pi minus x. So the answer to this question will be 3 pi minus x. X here is 10. Clear? Any questions? Okay, so um, I would not like to start with cos inverse cos x, but I will definitely take few questions with you all. So let's take few questions on this topic. So let me just This question has been asked in NCRT exemplar. Sign inverse sign inverse of cos 33 pi by 5. In fact, let me just take a snapshot of this. Let me put the poll on. In fact, if you want to answer on the poll or through the poll. Very good. One person has answered. Miraculously, some people are also giving me answers which are beyond minus pi by two to pi by two. <laughs> that is not possible. Sign inverse of anything has to be between minus pi by two to pi by two only. So few of the options you can outrightly reject. They cannot be your answer. But I will not tell which one because some people are, since some people were answering with the wrong options. See guys, you're taking this chapter in the same way as you took your trigonometry of class 11th. No, it needs deep thought. Okay. Logical way of answering. Don't, don't just take this chapter like any other chapter. It is one of the trickiest chapter in mathematics.
Okay, uh, let me conclude the poll in the next 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, so uh, I got responses from nine of you so far, of which four of you say option number D. Now, first thing what I'll do is this expression cost 33 pi by 5. I will write, I'll try to simplify it. See, anyways, it's going, it's, it's a value that I have to find out. Okay. So why not write it as uh, 6 pi plus 3 pi by 5? Okay. So this is as good as cost 3 pi by 5. Cost 3 pi by 5 is sine pi by 2 minus 3 pi by 5. Correct. And that is clearly sine minus pi by 10. Right. So now this question is as good as sine inverse sine minus pi by 10. Please note that minus pi by 10 very much belongs to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Right. Right. So it belongs to that y equal to x line. So this answer will be minus pi by 2. Sorry, minus pi by 10. So option number D is pakka correct. Now people who said A, this cannot be the answer because this is 0.6 pi. Correct. So this does not belong to minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. It cannot be your answer. This also cannot be your answer because this also does not belong to minus pi by 2. Right? Your answer has to be between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Correct. So either C or D could have been your answer, but we figured out that D is the answer. Getting this? Clear everyone? Okay. Let's try to do the next one. Okay, again, a simple question. Which of the following is correct? Poll is on. Okay, Arvind. Okay, Satyam, we'll see, we'll see. Just waiting for everybody to give it a try and give their responses on the poll. Next class uh, would be offline, right in your school premises, as we discussed, 315 to 645. Okay. <clears throat> we'll continue with this uh, same property. This Sunday's test of J main, whatever we will cover, whatever we have covered in inverse trigonometry till today, that will be, that can be asked. Okay. Okay. Should we start the discussion because it's already time. Two minutes are gone and it's 7.30 also. So let me stop the poll at the count of five, five, four, three, two, one and go. Okay. Most of you have gone with option number A. So out of six people, five people say option A and only one person, I think it's Satyam who has gone with B. Okay. See, tan one radian 
Okay. Now see, one radian is approximately. I mean, I'm just taking a rough picture. It's 57 degrees, but I'm taking it as 60 degrees, right? So this will be very close to root three. Root three is 1.73, something very close to it. And tan inverse one is pi by four. Pi by four is roughly 0 0.76. Correct. So option number A is for sure correct. Correct. Okay. So this cannot be correct. And of course, this two cannot be correct. None of these cannot be correct. So option number A is correct. Okay. Good. So we'll stop our discussion here. Uh, this chapter has much more to it. We have only covered, let's say 20% of the topic. 80% is left to be covered. So we'll do the remaining topics in the offline mode in your school. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. See you very soon. Right in your school premises. Bye-bye. Good night.